Um, I know you had a players meeting before the first training session on Monday. Um, what have you spoken about to try and change the results, to try and change the pattern of defeats? Well, we, we have just been continuing trying to implement the principles we would like to have in play, showing them the good stuff from our last camp and the bad things as well, just trying to learn from the last camp, building on to this one. Uh, honestly, maybe, maybe Nathan could answer that one better than me, but I really feel much better this camp, uh, both on meetings, on the sessions. There's a higher tempo in what we are doing that would tell me that they are getting it better than, than last time and maybe understandable, uh, a new coach, maybe new things, uh, etc. Uh, so I, f I feel much better this camp, but that's mainly what we have been doing. I think we have had five meetings or something, so we're doing more talking than training. From a player's point of view, Nathan, how has it been? I mean, I imagine you're captain the side tomorrow. No, it's been a very positive week, I think. I think we've had a lot of meetings, obviously, but we've had to. It's part and parcel of international football. I think the work we've done on the pitch has been very productive. And I think we're looking forward to going now. And we have a good feeling this week. We felt a lot better. We know our, we know our ways around the, what the gaffer wants again. And yeah, there's been a better feeling this week. Damien? Uh, can you draw parallels between the job you're trying to do now with Ireland and the mission you launched with Iceland all those years ago? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of similarities. Um, starting from a low point, I would say, in, in both projects. Um, trying to build a structure, which is really important in a national team. Uh, not taking taking it a game by game, but building something together from one game to another, trying to build on what we did last time, etc. I think that is really important. said so many times that it's so different to be a national team coach. For example, this, if you just take this camp and it will be the same next camp, uh, players play on Sunday, they come, they cannot train on Monday. So yesterday was probably the only training session, real training session we can have. So that's the only time we have all the players and they are physically ready to do a, a training session. So it, it's tough to be a coach and have only one training session. So we just need to have everything ready on what we did last time and try to build on that one because it, the players will then go to their clubs and do something totally different for a month. And then next time they will come, we will again have one training session. So we just need to be ready and, and clear on what we want, not to overload the players with information, just keep on building and then slowly, camp by camp, improving what we are doing. It's been a difficult couple of years in terms of the results. Does the team almost have to learn how to win games again? No, we just need to find our ways to win. And once we do, then hopefully we can, we can keep on winning. Nathan, just wait for you. Hey, um, in the past, Irish teams generally today for massive training quite late in the evening, so I've been a bit earlier today. What's your thought process about getting the players out of the pitch very early, having just arrived in yesterday evening, and obviously it's a long time to kick off then tomorrow night? No, that would be my preference of doing it this way. I think travelling is one thing. Uh, let's say we, we would have a lot of coaches do the same time as kickoff time. Um, that would mean today we would just be waiting for a training in the afternoon. Instead, we finish that off. Uh, and then the players can do whatever they need to do. Some players probably need to get some sleep. Uh, so they can do that you know, after the training session. And then tomorrow we'll, we'll do an activation in the morning and have a late kickoff. That's just my preference. I think that's better in the environment we we are working in, um, and especially travelling between countries. I think that's a good thing to to do the training early um, and have then the players can choose what they do for the rest of the day. Uh, Nathan, can I just ask you about uh, the captaincy? What it means to you? Um, your experience of being a leader, maybe people you've spoken to about leadership and um, your role within the camp as captain of this one without a lot of the experience there being here. Yeah, um, obviously, 
huge moment for me and my family. I probably didn't take it in the moment as much as I should have, but that's just the way I am. I think my family did. I think there was, I think they were crying in the stand. Honestly, it means a lot to me and my family. Uh, I think this camp, it's nearly easy being a captain in this team because there's so many leaders. I can go through the team now and you could name six or seven boys that will help me out, that will like ch chip in, you know, talk, motivate, and makes my job easier. And obviously, I'm missing a few of the older boys, you know, past leaders. It is time for boys to step up, and it's time for us to start showing our leadership. Hi, Mark. Um, you mentioned you lose you lose a day of training because of your weight trips, but is there something about the weight trips um, that can bring the squad together and can really help bond the team? And you know, at this time, it's probably going to be a good time to, to go on a trip with the team and to, what, to really forge that bond with the team. You think if you're on a I wouldn't say maybe a losing streak. If if, if you're in a, a downward spiral, I think it's good to go somewhere and do something different in a different country, in a different hotel, different environment, they shake things up. And of course, the players are staying together much much more and closer. So that that's a good team building um, thing to travel to to stay somewhere else, etc. Uh, so that's 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 one thing uh, in this. And then just in terms of the match tomorrow night. Um, can you, uh, even though confidence is low, can you ask the team to play without fear tomorrow night? And do you think that confidence will come just by playing, uh, uh, you know, without the burden of the jersey, as you said? As you said? Yeah, I, I think without fear just go, goes in line with confidence of knowing what you should do. And then you start to play without fear. When, you, when everybody is doing, you know, going the same direction, knowing what is going to happen. I said before, after the, uh, before this camp and after the last camp, yeah, I felt the kind of, it, it looks like, in, like, it looks like players are not confident when there is a run, but not a pass, or there's a pass and not a run. And, and there's not, you know, in defense, Mm, the decision making is slow because you're you're hesitant of going. So I think I think confidence comes with knowing what you're doing, and then slowly you build upon that. Um, thank you. Have you could just discuss the challenges <coughs> you know, like Hammer was talking about of, of only getting those kind of brief opportunities to train and to kind of learn what he wants to do with this team. Yeah. Um, as I said, it's part and parcel, isn't it, of international football. Sometimes you have more time, sometimes you know, sometimes it's a one, uh, it's a one game international break, isn't it? But we're unfortunate it's, uh, it's folded like this, you know, but there's not much we can do about it. We have to, we just have to soak in all the information they give us. We're professional, which is what we do, you know, we have to, it's our job. So I don't, it doesn't change much for us. I think we just have to soak in all the information, do our <coughs> most we can do on the pitch and just get work from there. There's not much else you can do. Oh. Hey, Mary, it looks like um, the stadium might only be half full tomorrow. Is that an advantage to you? And so, I don't no, I don't. I don't think it's a, an advantage or disadvantage to us. Obviously, there will be less maybe people supporting Finland, but I think once the game starts, the players are not looking up in the stands. They they just focus on what they are doing. So, I I don't I don't feel a, an advantage or a disadvantage. Um. Um, I don't think it's a lack of confidence. I think it's fairly frustrating, of course. I think it's it's annoying and we're eager to make it right. I think there's a lot of frustration that within the lads because we know as a group we are a good team. We have good players. We see what we're doing at a club level as individuals and lots of players are flying at the moment. So I think it's more frustration that we can't get that result. But I think, as I said, this week has felt better as a group talking with the lads. The information we're taking in, the way we've been training, everything does feel better, and so we're looking forward to it again. Hey. How's it going? You said there it's easy to be the captain of this team because there are only six or seven different leaders. Have the group you've got together, because the manager said there was going to be felt a bit of a dead hand spoiler, but a group you've actually got together to discuss what's been going on over the last little while and the champions? Uh, no, no, we haven't. We haven't really had the time for that either. You know what I mean? But uh, we don't need that again. It's, 
as I said, there is many leaders I can go through. I could go through six or seven different lads that will help out, but I don't think we need to create a group of leaders to change what's happening. We know what's happening. We know what we need to do. It's just, it's just about doing it on the pitch. You know, getting boys ready for meetings. Just, just being professional and getting everyone going and make sure their standards are as high as possible. I'll take both if I could. <laughs> Neil and Dan, yeah. No one knew that to decide what they need to mention. Hi, Eric. Um, just, just the way things have changed in the training session, have you had to change the way you coach compared to Isaac and Wendell at the international level of Burma? I don't think so much. Of course, learning the culture, how to talk to them is, of course, a strange accent guy coming, trying to speak Irish. Uh, so, so that's probably the toughest thing. Um, like I've said before, I'm, I'm trying to use the, the assistant coaches as much as I can to also deliver the message that we, we want to get through. But no, I don't think we have, I, I am doing anything different than from, from them before. Lucas Radecki said Ireland's style of play is pretty straightforward, but it could be possibly chaotic. Is that a fair characterization? And do you regard possibly chaotic as a compliment? Nah, uh, no, I don't don't want to don't want to comment on that comment. But if that is his analysis, then we must respect his opinion on it. But we just want to be in, uh, effective in what we are doing. If he thinks that that's chaotic, then okay. <laughs> Position since he's been in the Ireland squad before you came in, uh, and even last month, um, you played him sort of more centrally in the second game. Is that where you see him going forward in, in, in that role? No, he has, he has many qualities. One of them is um, his eagerness to run in behind, defence, you know, finding spaces, uh, and uh, for example, the, the, the Greece game. He went multiple times in behind the defensive line without getting the pass, but he kept on going, going, going. There's not many players that have that um, in modern football today, the will to go endlessly. Normally they would stop running when, when the pass doesn't come. But no, no, he can play a lot of, lot of positions. No, it's, it's just this energy and this enthusiasm that you want in your team that he has. And we, I think we haven't found his best position, but we, we are looking, so who knows if he plays tomorrow in what position he'll pop up in. Uh, Nathan, can I just say, uh, you got an interview after the last game, you were sick of losing, it was quite a sort of strong interview. Does that sort of reflect the sentiment in the camp? I, I think maybe there's some comments around the last camp and outside. Now, are you, does, does it hurt these players enough to lose? I mean, does that... I mean, I suppose the your interview after the last game reflect the feelings of the group that maybe had enough of this, I guess. Yeah, of course we're we're all we're all Irish, we're all footballers, we all want to win every game with Ireland. You know, we've always said it's a dream to play for Ireland. Well it's a dream to qualify for tournaments, it's a dream to push this team to the next level. So I think I said after the last game there was a lot of talk in the dressing room between the lads, it wasn't nice, it was it was it was it was a tough chat, you know, as a group and we we've been speaking this week as well, how much we just want to win, how much we just want to get over that line, get that good feeling back, get that feeling back into the country and you know, as a group, I think we are all sick of it and we all are getting frustrated, as I said before. But as I said again, this week there has been a better feeling going into it, so we are looking forward to it again. Hey, uh, just two more How do you strike a balance between a player's quality and what you know he can do in game time? I think you particularly having all of our delegates in the last time, making a start, nothing across. Can he go into the team tomorrow to play this? I'm sorry, yeah, tomorrow with no risk? Yeah, sure. Sure. Often, often players play really well with the national team, even though they're not doing it with the clubs, and then vice versa as, as well. So that does not need to go hand in hand uh, at all. If he's doing his job for the national team and doing well, and the team is doing well, I see no reason why it should be. It's obviously always the individual, the position, who we are playing, the the team selection. So no, I. I it doesn't need to be, but of course that will be the preference that the player is playing really well 
flying in his team, coming into the national team. That will always be the preference. Thank you. Just ask you about Finland. What do you expect from them? I think Karen and probably one of their former players will start to play probably well in the Champions League, but he's injured. Does that change their plans or have you planned for him? No, they're, they're playing, I would say, that they would play a style that we think we know more or less how, how they're going to play. Uh, they, they are really tactical, hard-working team, honest, honest <coughs> team, honest players, uh, quick back, quick transition team, uh, and how they, how they score goals is, is maybe easy to analyse, but difficult to play against. And that's a sign of a good team, and that is why they they qualified for, for for major finals is that they are effective in the way they are playing. Yeah, Hi, Good morning. Have you any personal memories of Helsinki in your football career? No, I think we played it. I don't even remember the result Iceland, uh, Finland against Iceland. I don't even remember what the result was here. <laughs> but I remember we stayed at the same hotel as we are doing now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I was I was thinking back. <laughs> Have you been here much over the years? No, I haven't been much in Finland. I think it's my third time. Uh, strange. Normally we would travel a lot around Scandinavia. And finally, um, have you a target in mind for these two games? A points target? No. I th I, my my wish is that our performance will improve from last game to this game and from this game to the next game. Um, I think there's not a big difference between us, Finland and Greece. So if we improve our performance, I think then it's closer to the win. So I just want a better performance. Of course, you, you always, always like to win. Uh, but a target, that I, I'm not setting it, but I think and I'm feeling positive, much more positive from what I see on training and meetings than I did last camp. Very finally, Nathan, beside you, what qualities do you have as a player and a captain? Well, he's, a, he's just an all-around good footballer, on the ball, off the ball, uh, leadership, playing at a high level day in, day out. Um, so it's, it's not like a one negative thing about his way of playing. Um, just a good